Hello, hello, friends. Let's just hope this works. <laughs> I just had to reset everything, you know? So I'm gonna make sure everything is working. I hope it's all working because everyone, can everyone see me? Can you all hear me? You know, is it working? Is it working? I hope it's working. Thing, everything froze up. I'm not even joking. Two minutes before I was supposed to go live. And I'm just like, restarting. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Anyway. Anyway. Hi. Welcome. I'm Amy of Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome to my face and my card making space. And welcome to the chaos. Because y'all know. Like, even so much as me scheduling. It looks like you guys can see and hear me. Let's We'll just see how this goes because, yeah, things are, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, but uh, welcome to the chaos. So hopefully I can switch between cameras. We can make a card. I have plans, you know, trying to be scheduled and do all the things is hard enough for me, but I do have plans. I, I was die cutting and I got product out and we're going to do, we're going to do some spooky, spooky things in this live stream. So Welcome, and the camera froze. Ah. Uh, okay. Yep. Let me know if you all can still hear me. I am going to. Yeah, I'm going to turn off and turn back on my other camera because that's what I was talking about. You know. I don't know why it's doing this. I'm really unbelievably frustrated. But I'm going to restart the other camera. And then we'll just see. I don't think that's going to do anything without me having to like completely restart. So you guys won't be able to see my face for the rest of this. But that's not the end of the world. Um, I'll get to that later. Let's just get into the mix. Because I don't need to sit in front of the camera the whole time anyway. And yeah, that other one is frozen. I, oh, I'm so fed up. I'm so fed up. Anyway, anyway, let's just, um, let's just make this work. You know, that's, that's, that's what I'm sort of good at. So spooky background. Ooh, I knew there was something I forgot to do. Okay. I gotta, I gotta write a quick little, little note to myself. Cause I always keep, I keep a handy stack of post-its off to the side. And there was, I was gonna add a link to something to Stacy. Okay, so I'll add that little note. Okay, and yeah, other cameras frozen. I'll, I'll deal with it. Spooky skies. I am gonna use, and some of this, before I actually start doing the things, a lot of what I'm using I already have linked in the description box below the video. If those aren't showing up for you, just refresh because I some of it I just posted right before I went live because again, tech issues. And then when this video is done, I will edit and add any links to things that I use that I missed, etc. There'll be a blog post, all that stuff. So that'll be done afterwards, but there is a lot already linked underneath and then there's just a generic link to Simon Says Stamp because you know if people want to shop that sort of thing but it's there. So spooky sky backgrounds. That's what I was writing the note to myself. I when I edit the links I will add the link to the person who inspired this technique. When it comes to I was going to talk about this with my face but you know most techniques in the card making industry are have been around forever. You know, they've been around forever. There's no one to credit. It's just random techniques that just everyone's known and done a million versions of. This one though, this specific one, I've done videos on, I've shown it in past videos. Some of you know exactly what I'm going to do, but it was inspired by Stacey Hutchinson, who is a maker for Tim Holtz. She did this a few years ago and it's 
so amazing. No one else has that. I, no one has done it before her. Like, so I credit her with this technique. This is not my technique. I didn't invent this. It's amazing and it's fun. So I always like to give her credit because I learned it from her. So when I edit, I'll link to her original blog post from a few years ago because it just chef's kiss. You know? So I wanted to just kind of explain that because I usually say it too when I do it and I haven't done it this year yet. I usually do it in my Halloween series because it's fun. So let's just like get, you know what? I'm going to take my hoodie off because I don't want to get this one. I got my apron on. See, and I'm like my stupid camera. Ugh. Anyway, I've got my apron on and things because this one gets messy. So messy, but it's fun. So let me throw my hoodie, even though it's a little chilly in my garage right now. And yeah, let's do, so yeah, hello to everyone. Hey, Mindy, Mindy's here and I don't know who all else is here. I'm seeing comments, things seem to be working. Things seem to be working. Anyway, I'm using the Picket Fence Studios Haunted Moon Blending Stencil. But for now, I'm just starting with the mask. This is, this is where the technique gets super fun. Let me get all the other stuff out of the way. And I'm just going to use a little bit of washi tape for this. You can use pixie spray and I've done pixie spray, you know, the, the repositional spray. But I find when I'm using pixie spray on a big solid mask, like something this size, I find that by the time I'm done, like adding all the things and then I go to peel up such a large piece that like it leaves all those like dots of adhesive and it's just annoying. And with this technique, it doesn't need to be perfect. Like I've done it in different ways. I've done like actual masking paper. I've done it with masks. I've done it with just a die cut of whatever, but I just need it to like hold in place. That, that's all that matters. So. And you can stick it wherever you want. I'm going to stick it in the center because I do plan on adding a spooky witch over it. So let me double check though. Because like, maybe I'll move this over a little bit. So yeah, this is going to be fun. So hello to everyone. Even my comments seem to be frozen on my so Like my software is not agreeing with me today. I am so frustrated. I just, I can't seem to like get this stuff to work for me. I will deal with it after, but I'm live now. So anyway, masked. We'll save that extra piece. We'll see if I do two. And then you can do this with all sorts of products. I want to do greens, but I'm going to do this with oxide sprays. So I've got, and again, I'll link to these. I haven't linked to them yet, but I will have links when I'm done. So I'm gonna use probably all of these. So I've got Old Paper, Twisted Citron, Rustic Wilderness, and Black Soot. And all of them, let's get the lids off. Yeah, my comments on my, oh, they seem to sort of be working. We'll see, we'll see. I'm. There we go. It's kind of catching up. Anyway, anyway, where is, this is also what I want. So oxide sprays. You want to shake them up really well. It's hard to tell on this one. Can you tell on this one with the late, here we go. This one, you can see it. With oxide sprays specifically, they are a mix of dyes and pigments. The pigments settle to the bottom of all these bottles. You need to shake these up before you use them because otherwise you are going to clog that nozzle with like the pigment sludge and you're going to wreck that nozzle and then you have to get another one and that's no fun. So we're just going to shake these dudes up. In fact, I got two hands. I like to, when, if you're not shaking, like technically you're supposed to shake them like a bell, you know, get that little ball going. However, um, if you shake them like this way, it's faster, but if you shake them like normal, a lot of times the ink will start kind of spurting out, which isn't the end of the world. But if you just kind of cover it, just like so, then we can like, <laughs> you know, 
So yeah, you just want to shake, shake the devil out of it, you know? So let's get them all shook up really, really well. This one is shaken up perfection. Let's do it with the old paper. Cardstock is white. This is white heavy stock. I'll get to that um, in a second. Let me just make sure everything. Let's just make sure everything is shaken up really well. You can hear that when you hear the ball bearing because these all have ball bearings in them. That, that clicking sound, that's the ball bearing. That's what you want to hear. That means it's loosened because it'll, it'll solidify in the sludge. So you want to loosen it really, really well and shake it really good. Mine have been, my sprays have been sitting for a really long time because I haven't used my oxide sprays in a while. And again, normally I would have this done before I even start. Oh, I'm also going to use mica stain sprays. Let me grab some of those. Wicked elixir, heck yeah. Okay. You can do this with distress sprays. You can do this with distress inks. You can use this with distress oxide inks. You can also add mica sprays. Um, basically you just want a very water reactive something, you know? And then heavy stock. This is distress heavy stock. I think I have a link. If I don't, I will have a link. Um, or watercolor paper. Again, you want something that can handle water. Because this technique, between the inks, sprays, water, etc. And then I'm going to use some mica stains. Because I love me some mica stains. These are the same idea as the oxide sprays. All the mica settles into the bottom. And the ball bearing you know, kind of, kind of solidifies into it. So you, same thing, you want to loosen that ball bearing and you'll hear it. See, there we go. And same thing, you shake the devil out of it. All right. All right. So I got that one. And then this one's one of the new ones. This is unraveled. Ooh, oof. But see right now you can't hear anything. You know, because the ball bearing is obviously stuck in the mica. So you want to loosen this up. Sometimes I'll even like give it a few. There we go. See, now you can hear it. So let's get this loosened and shake the devil out of it. Alrighty. Oh my goodness. So yeah, thank you guys for tuning in and bearing with me and my technical difficulties because of course I'm going to have technical difficulties because that's just, it wouldn't be a video with me without technical difficulties, right? Right? <laughs> uh, I haven't used my oxide spray in front. Same. I haven't used mine in a while, hence me needing to like really shake them up because they've been sitting in a drawer for too long. So yeah, with any of them, you can see, see that? See how there's still mica and stuff sitting? You want to shake these until all of that, you want it all gone. Same with the oxide sprays. Any type of spray with a product that separates, you want to shake it until, and like you shake it until there's no, there's nothing. So now, there we go you know, and then keep them on their side till you go to use them. Cause it's a lot easier. Like they're already starting to separate again. Cause that's again, it's just the nature of the product, but this way you can just give them a quick shake and they're good to go. So let's get into the fun. So heavy stock, like I said, you want something that can handle water, heavy stock, distress, heavy stock can handle this technique. Watercolor paper works as well. Heavy stock comes in white. There's a cream color. There's craft, black. I like white for this technique because it makes the moon glow more. But let's just 
also lay out my flower sackcloth because again this gets messy so we got all this I've got my spray bottle now let's just let's just muck around so I've got some old paper oxide spray a couple sprays of that let's add some twisted citron we'll add some and it's getting all over my ball i don't care i don't care we'll do some rustic wilderness and then some black soot And then, look at the mess I'm making. But it's fun, so whatever. Let's add a bit of, this is Wicked Elixir. And then some unraveled mica stain. And I'm like making a big old mess. Hi, Amy. I've not seen your videos in years. Obviously, I'll have to watch from the beginning. <laughs> I've been uploading tons of videos. I haven't gone anywhere. I now have well over 2,000 videos on YouTube. It's, it's what I do. Okay. Okay. So, before I get to the actual technique, I'm going to, like, heat this a bit. Because right now, it's super, super wet. Which you can tell, because it's super glossy. Cause I got a lot, I got a lot going on here. So let me, it would help if I plugged in my heat tool. Uh, hello, Jen, welcome to the chaos. Oh, I like bent my, there we go. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's dry this. carefully and that's fine I don't care about that let me quickly wipe this off though because if I do a set I'm probably going to do a second background you know because why not I have other colors set aside to do a second background with so I'll set that aside so right now I just kind of have a mess you know but Okay, that's enough. The magic is the spooky technique. And all you need for this is water because again, all of these are water reactive, very water reactive because they're distress. So oxide sprays, I could have used oxide inks, distress inks, distress ink sprays, any of it. But the magic is when you start spraying it with water. And you get this. So now we've got spooky, creepy, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Kelly. So yeah. So basically the sprays are available in the same colors as the oxide. Oh yeah, oxide, oxide sprays come in every, every distress color black soot, twisted citron, everything, comes in an oxide spray, an oxide ink pad, a distress spray, a distress ink pad, re-inkers, all the things, all the things. But yeah, that is how you get a super spooky looking moon. I'm going to dry this completely. I can also take 
Where did I? There it is. Also take that and just kind of dab up any excess. And I'm left with, there you go. You can kind of see the mica spray, you know? So we got that going on. And then let me go like so. And then to really make it more, more moon-like, I want, uh, this color, I think. I think I'm gonna go in with pumice stone. And let me knock over absolutely everything as I'm doing this. You know? Okay. Okay. Because let's make this look more like the moon. So. Now I'm using the actual stencil because I used the mask from this stencil. So now I can use this. We'll take a pouncer and we're gonna make this look more like the moon. And I'm only gonna go in light because this is also oxide ink and I still wanna see all those spooky scraggly bits but it looks more you know like it's supposed to you know did you spray the water just where the ink is or the moon itself no i sprayed water onto everything i didn't have a mask you can't you know the water just goes and because there's nothing here and there was water as it sprayed it caused it to travel into these other areas. There we go. So we've got like a spooky moon going on. And it's all like, yeah, yeah. So, so, what I'm going to do before I do a second background, I am going to stencil the witch over this because then I can set this aside to dry while we work on the second one. Cause you guys know I like to do more than one, um, more than one. So for this, we're going to use some black opaque texture paste. I used the glow in the dark texture paste, uh, the grit in my last video that went up just last night. But this time we're gonna use black. So let me get my palette knife. And do I wanna use all these parts or do I, I think I just wanna use the actual witch and not the trail, you know? Yeah, I'm gonna mask off these portions with just some pixie tape. The trail is super cute, I love it, but I don't wanna use it for this. So let's just mask that off. And then I've got this and my texture paste. And let's just apply it. <laughs> look at it how fun is that seriously <laughs> i love it love it okay let me wipe off this stencil because i am going to use it again obviously oh love it the stencil this witch stencil is linked 
everything that all the pig events products so far that I'm using, um, I have linked. And then, like I said, I'll link to everything afterwards, but let me quickly just give this a quick little wipe down since I do actually have a container of water off to the side, but since I plan on using this again, like right away, I want to just wipe this off just like so because you don't want to let paste dry on your stencils because it becomes an absolute nightmare trying to clean them afterwards this doesn't need to be perfect because I'll give it a good wash like after the live oy, oy. I have never used paste oh you are in for a treat pastes are like so fun and there are so many and like picket fence has a ton um and I, I've done tons of videos using all different types of paste, all different brands. There's so many good ones. I love them all, really. Like, you just, you can't go wrong. Okay, that's clean enough for me. I don't really care. So, right now, and oh, by the way, this is five by seven. Just to give you an idea of how big this stencil is. This is the main one. This is the one I have linked to. In my other videos, I've used the mini moon stencil from Picket Fence, which is about that big, you know? This is the this, this is the normal size one. So it gives you an idea. This is five by seven inches. Just so you can see how big it is. So yeah, this is five by seven. I might trim it down a little bit when we finish the actual card, because my card is gonna be five by seven. But for now, we're just gonna leave it. And Dawn. Oh hey Dawn! I'm going to copy your rose card, sort of. I'll put my own spin on it, but yeah, I was going to do black roses for Halloween. And then you went and did the red and I'm like, oh, love, love. So yeah, love it. And yeah, it's no fun trying to clean stencils after you've let things dry on them. It's not fun. So I probably missed something. Could you use white paste that you color black? Yes, I do recommend when it comes to black. If like I reckon because and this is available, you know, and Picket Fence also has a black paste. It's not the same look, but they have, I think it's called Blackboard and that's a really good one too. It works great too. You can tint your paste. You can tint them with water-based products. So you can use like your paint, your, your, um, Reinkers, things like that. However, however, especially to get black, and I'm I'm sure I've done it in previous videos, but when you're trying to get your paste, like say a white paste to black, you have to add a lot, <laughs> you know, to get it there. And it starts thinning out the paste. And there's also a chance that whatever you add can start like leaking into your, you know, outside where you want it to go, if that makes sense. So more than anything, if you want like a black race I, I highly recommend like and again Tim did a Tim's distress video his Halloween distress video on was that three weeks ago whenever two weeks ago something like that he showed like all the different samples he did like using this on black cardstock and spraying it and white you know did 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 and get a jar of this honestly it's this this is the ugh, I'm trying not to swear you guys this is the good stuff all right <laughs> I recommend it it's good but yes, you can tint your paste. Totally. It totally works. Okay. Now, let me, I don't care if it gets on my hands. Let's do this again. So white heavy stock, five by seven, super, super heavyweight. Love it. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Don't, oh, you guys after, after watch my life, please. And then after, go to Dawn. It's Dawn Wolfslagle. She's she's commenting in the in the live chat. Go to her channel or the Honeybee channel. They've got it on both. She did a video that went up. Was that just today? She used the Lovely Layers roses and then she tinted them. Like she took you know die cut them in red and then used black ink and oh they're ugh, love love. I'm li I'm literally gonna copy her because I love it. I love it. It was awesome. And I was like, everyone's saying Haunted Magic, but I was thinking um, Adam's family, like Morticia, Morticia Adams snipping off the roses. I was like, oh, 
So yeah, definitely watch it. Anyway, anyway, let's do a different color combo. So I have speckled egg, peacock feathers, maybe some chip sapphire, black soot. We'll still use the unraveled, but let's bring in a bluey purple spray mica stain. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Phantom mist. Yes. I'm excited. I may have tech issues and my other camera's completely frozen, but I'm having fun. And as long as you guys can see and hear me, I love Morticia. I love The Addams Family. It's one of my favorite movies. And Morticia and Gomez. Ooh, I forgot to wipe off my palette knife. Let's just fix that before I have to scrape it off. Okay, we're good. We're good. Anyway, Adam's family. So anyway, that movie was awesome. And I am going to do something inspired by Dawn's card in the near future. Because I, I literally already had mine planned out, but I was just going to do black roses. No way. Though the red with the black is so much better. It looks so much better. So yeah. Okay. Okay. This one needs to be really shaken up. Oh, this is a gorgeous color. Actually, all these need to be shaken up. What am I doing? Let's get all the lids off. And let's get another workout in. Yes, and you guys saw the comments about the upper um, upper arm worker. Have you watched Wednesday? Oh, heck yeah. Loved it. I got such a kick out of Wednesday. I cannot wait for the second season. I loved it. I wasn't, like, sold on it at first, you know, because I was like, it's different characters. But, obviously obviously but it was so well done i fully enjoyed it it was it was so good so yeah this reminds me when i'm doing this i'm always reminded of those stupid shake weights you guys remember those infomercials <laughs> uh, yeah So yeah, but yeah, the Adams Family movie and the original sequel will always be forever favorites to me. And then the Wednesday series on Netflix, love it, love it. It was just, it was such a good time, you know. I just love it. Okay, okay. So everything is shooken up. Mask in place, heavy stock. Let's just do this. All right. So we're going to start with speckled egg. Speckled egg. Let's bring in some peacock feathers. Chip sapphire. Oh, yeah. Black soot. Making mess. Unraveled, shake that up again. Oh, I clogged mine. See, this is why I say shake them up good because I clogged mine. Yep. Well, we'll just go like this. That works too. It's not going to matter. It's all going to like blend together anyway. But let's. Shake this dude up. Okay. So, mess has been created. Let's quickly give this a dry. Sprays are my weakness. Honestly, dude, Dawn, you would probably rock the sprays. I I need to like stop so I can like speak. Sprays scared the crap out of me. Not scared me. I, yeah, they're intimidating. They're, you know, because you can't control them. Whereas like an ink pad and a brush or whatever, it's like you control. 
where sprays, they go just everywhere. But they're so fun because that's the whole point, you know? And Dawn, pull out the sprays. You will have tons of fun with them. And yeah, once you kind of give up the control and start playing with the sprays, legit, it becomes so, so fun. And my mother's phoning me. Mom, no. I, how did do you not know that I'm on live right now? <laughs> uh, anyway. Anyway. Okay. There we go. Now we get the mask off. You don't have to be like gentle removing it because that's irrelevant. I'm just trying to keep myself from getting completely covered. And then this one I'm just going to set. I'll wash him later. Doesn't matter this time. So now we got this, you know, doesn't really look like much, but the magic is the spray. <laughs> oh, I love it. And then dry. Thank you. Welcome to everyone that's here and the chaos and the mess and all the things. As I'm drawing this, I'm going to text my mother so that she knows I'm not ignoring her. Ugh. Anyway, okay. Okay, there we go. There we go. There we go. And it also, this one kind of dispersed more of the shimmer. So it's kind of just throughout the entire background. You know, I've got a few splotches of that unraveled here and there. I might add more after, we'll see. But yeah, these are fun. <laughs> these are fun. So yeah, it's not quite dry. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna dry it a little bit more cause I went pretty heavy with the sprays. You can do whatever you want. Like there's no, um, there's no rules, you know, even with certain techniques with certain things, there's still no rules. Like you do what works for you. I sometimes, yes, you can spray just the moon and leave the background. That's fine. Do what works for you or what look you're going for or all the things, you know what I mean? So, okay. Let's add, let's add our little witchy poo to this one as well. And we're just going to stick her like so. Got my black texture paste. No, my mom is not in the chat. My mom uh, was texting me or phoning me. Um, uh, Just give me a sec, busy. Anyway, okay, where did I put my palette knife? Okay, yeah, no, my mom is not, she's somewhat online, but not really. Anyway, let's get back to this. Black texture paste. This is why I need an assistant. 
Like, can you end it? I never, no one ever phones me, ever. And of course it happens when I'm live. <laughs> uh, figures. Anyway, it's all good. It's all good. I just need three more pairs of hands, an assistant, and a bigger house. Not too much else. And a million dollars would be wonderful too. You know, honestly, if we're, we're making wishes, I might as well be honest. That would make my life so much better. Anyway, anyway, I am, uh, uh, yeah, 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 okay. Boop. Do I need to say anything more? Honestly, really? We could just call this a day and it's great. It's great. It looks great. I love it. Okay. I actually have a container of water, so I don't even need to wipe this off on camera. You guys can look at my two amazing backgrounds with their witchies. Like, look at that. Ooh, I forgot to do the stenciling. Oh, whatever. Whatever, man. I got distracted. I like it more with the stenciling. I should have done that, but now it's too late. Oh, well. What can you do? You know? You know? But yeah. Let me throw that into water. Let me throw... No, this doesn't really need to be thrown in water. I can just wipe this off. I can just wipe that down. Let me get that out of there because that is an absolute mess. I'm going to move my sprays out of the way and wipe these down. So, like Tim Holtz would say, come on. I know, right? Come on. <laughs> uh, gotta love it. His lives are the best. Absolute best. Okay. Let's move all of this and my flower sack cloth. Let's get that out of the way. I'm gonna have to wash this flower sack cloth after this video because I got a ton of ink on it, which is what it's for. But let me just hang it up so that it's out of the way. And then, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Um. Don't forget the press and seal. Yes, press and seal. I have it in a different area. Talk about this all the time. Press and seal and paste. I don't worry about it with these, honestly. I'm not gonna seal this with, not right now. I will, after this season, I will seal it. I find that uh, Distressed Texture Paste, it doesn't matter like that this one's black. These last really, really well. I actually have some that are more than a couple years old that I've never used press and seal on that are fine. However, However, caveat. In fact, I'm going to show the press seal because I linked to it. I linked to it. It's linked below. Press and seal. If you do not have this in your craft room, I highly recommend it. Simon Says Stamp does sell it because it is very hard to find internationally. So they carry it specifically. But you, most of us in North America can find it at most grocery stores. Anyway. You use it to seal your pastes. And Dawn, who I was talking about, she does a ton of videos and she's done like press and seal hack videos and she uses it for placement and like, there's a million ways you can use this stuff, but she does a better job of me explaining it. Anyway, sealing your paste with press and seal extends the life because it removes the air and it seals it better than the lid would. And especially not so much this one, but glitter paste and ones of just certain textures, this helps because pastes are not meant to last forever. They are not even meant to last for 10 years or five years or even a couple years, especially once you've opened them. But glitter paste, let me go on my little rant, even if you've never opened them, like they're still factory sealed, everything, they will solidify in the jar. It takes a variety, it just, it varies on the time. So sealing them up, but you also don't need to have like 500 bottles of paste, like every single color. And this is coming from someone who has to have every color of everything. When it comes to products that are, do, are not meant to last forever, just, you don't need them, you know? Like just get a couple, use what you love, that sort of a thing. I'm only saying this because I've had some people contact me and like so angry about, they're like, you know, I'll never buy this brand 
of XYZ paste again, mine dried up. And I'm like, you, you, you expect it to last forever. It is a water-based product, you know, in a container and air, you know, cause when you use it, it, it dries, you know, that that's what it's supposed to do. It's not supposed to last forever, you know? So yeah, press and seal, get some press and seal. I have a link to it in the description box below. So there's my thing. Uh, if press and seal will work as a mask, kind of, but good luck trying to cut it or die cut it. It's, it's not, even cutting press and seal can be as finicky. Like I would never use this as a mask only because it's like you're, when you're trying to cut it and just all the things. No, there's masking paper and stencil masks. So anyway, yep, yep, yep. So that's, that's my spiel on presence. And already like this is dry to the touch. It's not fully dry. I can tell, but this is already dry to the touch and it's been what? 10 minutes of me blabbing, maybe a little bit longer, but yeah. And this one, it's still a little wetter, but these dry and I applied it thin as well. That it varies on the type of pace. So, um, yeah, no. You're going to get blocked. Um... Yep, there we go. I already am going to need a moderator. Anyway, good lord. So yeah. Anywho. Anyone that sees messages like that, like, I'm trying to prevent being scammed. They're the scammers. Ignore them. Ignore them. You know, report them, whatever. I don't know how it works on the other end. Um, but, yeah. Um, yes, wish it would cut off the roll better. No, no. That's, it's literally the, the, the way this product is made. And really, cling wrap in general. You know, using cling wrap is, it's the nature of very, very thin plasticky products you know so ignore the scammer i blocked her she her comments will not do not that adrian gilbert is a scammer ignore her anyway the other thing i did i use ooh let me i'm gonna move <laughs> my mask let me wipe off this mask that i used before we do anything else because I'm going to like put my elbow in this and have ink absolutely everywhere. So let's just, let's just take care of that. Shall we? Oop. There we go. All right. So we got the backgrounds and oh yeah, we're doing okay. Okay. Backgrounds are done. I've somewhat wiped off my mess. There's another one. Oh my God. I don't have time for this crap. No, no, no. Where is it? Get out of here. Get out of my chat. Hide user on this channel. Ah! Please do not respond to anyone claiming that kind of crap. It, it, it brings out cause there's, there's groups of them that do this kind of stuff and they, they respond to each other. So they make it sound like they're, you know, being helpful and they're, they're literal effing scammers. Okay. Okay. Let's just get back to what I was doing. So I has this so far. And then what I did was I pulled out Bye Dawn. I'll see you later. Isn't there a witch mask that you could? Yes, you're right. Yes, you're a genius. It is, it's right here. Ha! Genius. I totally forgot about this. Yes, I can put this, once this is a little more dry, ha, I can put this on here. There isn't one for the bat, but that's okay. And then I can still, ooh, ooh, how, how? Yeah, let's let that dry a little bit more. You're a genius. Thank you. 
Thank you for reminding me of the thing that was literally right in front of my face. So let's just set him here, her. Let's set her here so I know forget. And I'll get to that. Let's let that dry a little bit longer. Anyway, anyway, back to work. <laughs> back to what I was doing. <laughs> uh, okay. This is the Slimline Brambles die from Pig Fence. This thing's huge. This is like eight and a half. Yeah, it's eight and a half inches. So this will work like on a Slimline card. But I die cut it ahead of time because I wasn't sure if I was going to do like two layers along the bottoms of my, because like seriously, like look how cool that looks. So I die cut them. And then another little tricky poo is when you have die cuts like this that have, let me move this out of the way, like, you know, there's so much detail and there's so many little bits, you know, little bits that you need to pop out. And, you know, you just sit here. We could sit here all bloody day, you know. However, a good piece of foam. I have a link to what I use in the description box below the video. And then um, Spellbinders Tool-in-One. There's other brands that make one. I know Sizzix makes one as well. But Spellbinders Tool-in-One. And the foam just gives a little give. And then I lay my die cut on here. This is also... This is also heavyweight cardstock. If you're using really thin cardstock, you have to be very careful with something like this because you could just shred your cardstock, especially because like, this is pretty delicate, you know? This is Simon Says Stamps black cardstock. So, and I've already been like, it holds up. But I stick it on here, lay it down, and then you just do the rolly bits and it starts popping out all those little tiny pieces. See? So that I don't have to sit and go boop, boop, boop. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Let's, let's pop out all the little pieces. Because I decided, like, even if I only use one on the front, because, I like I said, I die cut enough to do maybe two layers, depending. But I'm thinking I'm probably going to use one on the front and then one on the inside of the card. Because, you know, why not? So, I don't press really hard. I just roll it back and forth over the areas that I need to pop out those little fiddly bits. You know, and then any of the few remaining ones, those ones I just you know, pop out and then we're good to go. And then this also works. This also works like if the die itself, if all those little bits were, you know, stuck in the die, rat, cause you know, there's holes. All the good quality dies by the good quality brands. You can see there's like all the little holes, you know, so that you can pop out all those little pieces. However, when there's a ton of them, I am not going to sit here all day with this and go, who's got time for that? Use this. And you literally roll it over because these bristles are firm enough. They'll press it and they'll pop it all out. And I just hold this over the garbage and I just, you know, and it all comes out. However, in this case, it all stayed in the cardstock, which is fine. It's fine. But when it doesn't and it sticks in the die, then I just, tool in one is the way to go. I highly recommend. And this also, it has its own pokey on here. It's little like die pokey. I keep the protector on this so I don't use it because I'm going like this and I am the type, I'll stab myself. I will. It will happen. So I, I keep just this tool instead. This is my pokey tool because it's separate. You know, I'm just, I'm trying to keep myself from getting stabbed. <laughs> uh, so yeah love love so pop her out and then roll her over to pop out all these little itty bitty pieces to clean her up and then there we go and it's just and then i like to turn it over and kind of work a little again gently from the back and the front because that just helps loosen all those random little pieces 
from the die cut. So yeah. I keep pokey tools and tweezers covered for the same reason generally. Like I keep this stored like this. This is the honeybee one and I have this linked as well in the description box. And it's got this little spatula side. It has a little spatula side and a little pokey side. So I keep mine stored like this so that when I'm like digging through my, you know, thing of tools, I don't, cause I've done it, you know, stab. Not a fun experience. So I keep it stored like this. And this one is nice because of the little spatula with some dies. You know, when the cardstock doesn't want to come out, you can just, you know, poke it out. And then I work the little spatula and go doop, and it pops out. But with this, again, it wasn't necessary. So good tools for good things. And yes, storing things in a way to keep yourself from becoming impaled is important because been there, done that. And some of our tools are very, very sharp very very pointy and uh, it's not fun like not fun okay all right okay i'm just making sure i'm keeping up with the chat because my software is not agreeing with me but i have it open as well so let's Let's do that. Get those last little bits out of here. Doop, doop, doop. There we go. This is such a fun way for dye. Okay, let's clean up the mess. Clean up the mess. Okay, okay. Now, this has had enough time. Yeah, still not 100% dry, but it's dry enough. So, because I forgot on this one, let's use, because the witch mask, or stencil, has a mask. So that can now enable me to fix what I forgot. Except for the bat, which I'm annoyed with myself about that. But you know what? If I use a brush instead of my pouncer, I can kind of work around it. That'll work. That's what I'll do. Let's take this and there we go. Because in the end, it's not really going to matter. Let's use the pouncer for the main parts of it. Okay. Okay. So. And then where, I just had the there's a brush. I was like, where's my brush? I did. Even with all of that, I still managed to get it on top of the bat. Good job, Amy. I know how I can fix that. Just give me a second. I'll fix it too. Yas. Much better. Much better. There we go. <laughs> love it okay okay so then to fix him i think just a little brush and some water will probably fix him right up if i'm if i'm careful you, yeah you can kind of see it in real life let's just take a damp brush because oxide ink is so pigmented and it sits on top i can basically
Somewhat wipe it away. And then where's my... There we go. That works a little better. Where's the brush? There's the brush. Just clean up the mess. That aside, oh, I got water in here. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Get the ink out of there. And now we've got our backgrounds. I think what I want to do, I'm going to trim these down. Let's trim these down a bit. Because I want them to be framed by my card. So I'm actually going to do that. And I'm actually going to let this be more centered. So we'll do that. And a little bit here. So these will now be six and a half by four and a half. Yeah, I like that. I like that better. So take a tiny bit off this side take some off the top yep mm, yep and then we'll take some off this side and some off the bottom there we go. All right, so those are trimmed down. And then I kind of want to add, man, I'm a mess. Kind of want to add a bit of that. Where is my blending brush? Um, there we go. Let's add a bit of black soot distress ink just kind of more around the edges to, to darken it up. So yeah. And let me grab, that was another thing I need. Make my life a little easier. All right. Let's move that out of the way. Okay. Move all this out of the way, this out of the way. We're just going to do this around the edges. Ooh. Ew. Careful with the fingernails. Alrighty. Something cute. Um, hello to New Zealand. Stop with, ugh. Careful with the pace and fingernails. I need to be more careful with what I'm doing. Boy. There we go. Yes, I like that much more. Just give it, gives it more depth. You know, get those corners and edges nice and black. I like that. I like that a lot more. Alrighty. Now let's do it again with this one. Huh. 
<laughs> Funny thing is, is I think this nail polish, isn't this called Cheshire Cat? I always, li it's linked in my all, or not linked. It's listed in all my, like on screen on all my most recent videos. I actually need to repaint my nails. I just haven't had time. So I've just been filing them down and they're growing out and I'm, a, everything's a mess. I'm a mess. I'm a mess. Welcome to my life. Um, but yeah, I think this one is actually called Cheshire Cat, which is funny. Because that's your username. <laughs> uh, so yeah. There we go. See, it just gives it that extra dark spookiness, you know? So we got that. Now to clean up the mess. Oui, oui, oui. Alrighty. And then while I'm at it, because I have like oxides and mica and everything, hand sanitizer. This helps clean up a lot of it. Or at the very least, it helps remove any of the excess. Because the staining, that'll come off. I talked about this in a recent video. When your hands get really stained, what actually works is a loofah. Take a loofah and some soap and just like really like work it and like rub your hands with that loofah. There is a tool that Ranger makes. It's like a little, it's almost like a pumice stone, but it's super, super abrasive. That does work to remove ink, but it will remove your skin in the process. So I don't really use that very often because it's, 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 it is very, very abrasive. So anyway, okay, so he has backgrounds. I've got some fun. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I really want to um, layer these. I'll put the other ones on the inside of the card. And then for my sentiments, um, wonder could it fit it would fit on the bottom of here you know if I really wanted to let me check <laughs> I could do that that would work oh heck yeah okay okay let's uh let's move these out of the way for a moment let's put that over there Okay, so I got that one. I got this one. I need my Misty. And we are gonna line up the sentiments. Onto a car. And this is like, this is the inappropriate Halloween stamp set. And yeah, being the family witch is a hard job, but someone has to step up and take one for the team. <laughs> I'm probably gonna put that on the inside. I love it. And this is still my favorite sentiment. Zombies eat brains, but don't worry, you're safe. So yeah, being normal is vastly overrated. Uh, I have found an effective way to end an argument is to smile and simply ask for a piece of hair. <laughs> Ah, uh, love it. Love it. Love it. You got to use some, uh, also moisturize before and after. Yes, within reason. I don't like, one, I don't use a lot of lotions and stuff. I have very oily skin. But you need to be careful because if, depending on the types of lotion you use, if you've got, like, that on your hands, you will get, like, it'll transfer onto cardstock and all that kind of stuff. Not a good time. You know, you don't want fingerprints all over everything. It's, it's, it's not, it's not fun. So yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm still on, I'm still on screen. I'm actually going to move this up. Let's, let's put this where it needs to be. Let's put it on this line. If we line it up on this line. That way I can get this just like so. 
And then again, let's put that back where he belongs. Back on the line, press it, oh, move it over. Would help if I, I need to clean off my grip mat. It's like so full of powder and things, but yeah. Yeah, stamp set is linked in the description box below the video. Anti-static powder tool. And I'll do it with this one as well, because we're doing this twice. So anti-static powder tool. I need my other heat tool for this. So I need the other one plugged in. Let me. Okay. All right, all right, got that, got that. Clear embossing ink. And I am gonna do, let's just do white embossing powder. Do white embossing powder. And let's stamp the sentiment. Ink it up with clear. And because the sentiment, Ugh, Amy, there we go. Oh, thank goodness I stamped it right. Okay, because the sentiment's detail, I was gonna say, you generally don't want to restamp it more than once or press very hard because you'll press out, you know, the detail and then you won't be able to read it. And that's no fun. There we go. Let me grab one of my little brushes because I got a couple little spots of embossing powder where I didn't want them. There we go. Now let's heat that. to do that a second time. Line it up on the line. Hold it in place. Yes. Yes. Alrighty. Let's ink this up with clear embossing ink. And then Stamp that. Yep. And then we do it a second time. And again, remove a couple little bits here and there that wanted to stick where they didn't belong. And then let's put the lid on this before I flip it over onto myself because you know it was going to happen. Oi, oi, okay. Alrighty.
Perfection. Let's get that off of there. And let's get this out of the way. Okay. I'm going to put this guy back so that I do not lose him. Looks like so. Okay. Now I want to remove the excess anti-static powder. Just like so. Perfection. So now we want to adhere that to the card. Basically, I'm just going to do a quick trim just so I'm not adding a bunch of glue where I don't want it. Okay. And then for the glue, I'm going to use some craft tacky glue. And then for this, I am not bothering. I'll just add a few dots here and there to some of the areas, but the whole thing does not need to be adhered. I don't have time for this. I ain't gonna bother fiddling with something like this. And if little bits stick up, that's fine. It adds to the, it adds to the spooky ambiance. Like it's got a mind of its own. And then we can flip it over and trim off the little bits that are hanging over the edge here. <laughs> I love it. That's so fun. Uh, it says, today's mood, witchy with a chance of sarcasm. I thought that was rather fitting here. So yeah, love it, love it. Okay, let's do this again with the second card. And we'll just pop off the extra bits. So I'm not adding a ton of adhesive, Can save these or something else, maybe some tags or something. We'll see. Definitely not in this video. I think I've done quite enough. And then let's add adhesive. And just checking to, okay. Checking the chats. Trying to keep up with all the things. And yeah. There we go. And we'll get that one stuck into place. Make sure it's lined up here on the bottom. Yep. Yep. The brambles could also be used for coral. Yes. Yes. If you, and they could still be black too, depending on like, if you did like an underwater scene, depending on what you have, these could still be black, you know, a silhouette or yeah, do them like, do it in white cardstock and ink blend like really bright colors. That would be cool. Yeah, it would look like coral. Yeah. Super fun. Super, super fun. Trim off. Add a 
that excess. And now I've got, <laughs> how fun are these? <laughs> ah, I love it. Okay. Next thing I need to do is the card bases, but I need my stencil back, which I had soaking. Let me grab where some, I need some paper towel. That's what I need. Let me get some paper towel and lay that out so I can quickly clean off this stencil because I had it soaking so that the stencil paste didn't, um, didn't dry on it. My brain is like starting to shut down. There we go. Ooh, and yeah, always got to be a little careful. I was a little too rough with this guy. There we go. He's big. Always be careful of any little delicate bits. You don't want to wreck them. Okay. Okay. Much better. Okay, so I got my stencil. I think I'll leave the mask in place or the tape in place because I still just want like this. And then my card bases, which I didn't make ahead of time because I am like, you know, you know. Oi, oi, oi. So card bases, let's just do, we're gonna do them in white. Do I want these framed in white though? Or do I want them? Yeah, I do. I want them framed in white. That's what I want. Cause I want, it'll make the spookiness pop. Plus it makes the insides easier. Method to the madness, always. So to make five by seven card bases, I'm gonna cut my card stock to 10 inches. By seven. There we go. Okay, and then I save my scraps because these are always good for die cutting sentiments and all the things. So I put those back and then I need this and my bone folder. And I need more space. Like I was wishing earlier, I would like an assistant. I would like a million dollars. And yeah, bigger house. I guess I did wish for that earlier. Bigger house, AKA more space. <laughs> but hey, it's all good. So yeah, score it at five inches. And then for those that aren't aware, might as well address this. I don't talk about this in my videos cause it's just, it's hard to explain. When you are scoring cardstock. So my cardstock was laid down. I scored it. You know, you press in, highly recommend a good bone folder. I have mine linked again, always. When you press it in, so the, 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 it's, it's going down so you can see, well, you can kind of see it, but you know, it's like card and then like exaggerated dupe, you know? So I've scored it. This is how you want to fold it like that because the scoring is basically breaking the fibers in the paper, especially if you're using good heavyweight cardstock. This is Simon's 120 pound cardstock. I could have used the white Ranger heavy stock, but this is what helps prevent cracking is you score it in the direction and then you fold. So basically you fold so that the mountain is in the inside of the card, if that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. And then I reinforce it with the side of the bone folder. So, but again, you can do whatever works for you. Like, it's not like a, a such a strong rule that you're doing it wrong. It just helps if you have issues with scoring. So, score it real good, fold it. Line her up, enforce the fold. Ready. So 
We has the card bases. I want to do my little witchy poo on the inside. I want her to be lighter. So I'm not going to use black ink because on the insides of my cards, I don't want them to be super, super dark. I think what I'm going to do is use a speckled egg. Yeah, I'm going to use old paper and speckled egg. That makes, that works for me. So, do I have that in? Oh, I do too. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. All right. Which means I need my die based pouncers. We'll do that. And I guess old paper will be considered yellow. Let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. And then you do not wash your picket fence paper pouncers. You do not want to put these, you don't want to put these in water. They will literally go bleh, like huge and they will never come back to their original size. I don't wash mine ever. However, if I'm going from a color like this to old paper, I like to make sure that I don't have like a ton on here and I'll just spray a bit of water onto this and then just lightly, lightly just to kind of remove some of the excess because I'm going such a like big color change and same with speckled egg since these are both very, very, very light colors. I think we need a tea color paper. Yes, I would totally like to go with the neutrals, you know, or a pastel set would be amazing. Not like we need more, but I'd be all over it. I'd be like, yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Where's my scrap paper? This will work. I only really care when I'm doing such light, like ridiculously light colors like this. Then it's just like, oh yeah. I wanna kinda make sure, I, and the same thing with my blending brushes. You know, I wipe them off really good. But let's like. Yeah, cause I've got a lot of yellow on here. Which is fine, really. Cause it's just gonna make her glow. Yeah, I'm going with it. I don't care. Ooh, let me grab. Where's that pixie pit tape? Um, let's move this card base out of the way. And let's just do that so that I don't get ink where I don't want it. Yeah, ignore the bat for a moment. I have a plan. I have a plan, I do, I really do. So, because I'm doing two and I got ink all over this, um, let me move that out of the way again and then let me quickly wipe off the stencil. There we go. There we go. Okay. So the inside of the second card. Line her up wherever I want. Jupe, jupe. Let's put that away. And that away. Ah. Uh, You're doing it wrong. Made me think of Kathy and the person who said she was using the Misty tool wrong. Oh, bosh. Whoever was saying that to her can kick rocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially like, Kathy is my friend. So if I had been in the chat, I would have gone, ripped him a new one because no need for it. But honestly, I get that a lot as a maker. 
that puts their stuff online, the amount of people that are constantly trying to tell me how to do my job, how I'm supposed to do this, how I'm supposed to, how I'm supposed to live my life, literally, literally. I've had people trying to tell me how to live my life. Good luck with that, you know, especially if for those that aren't aware, I'm as stubborn and contrary as you can possibly get. So yeah, do it. Come on to my videos and tell me that, you know, splatter is incorrect and that you shouldn't be saying it and go on this whole rampage and say that like it's your literal mission in life. Now it's splatter with a capital L forever. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, some of the weird stuff we get to put up with. I love doing what I do and I love sharing with you guys and I love chatting with you guys, but man, some days things get crazy. Uh, is Sunday Live with Amy going to be something we can look forward to? Or are you trying different days? No, Sundays. Sundays at 2 p.m. Central. Where that is, that is locked in. Um, I may down the road do other, um, lives like for funsies like just extras depending on what I have going on but in general it is going to be um Sundays at 2 p.m central so that people know you know this this was the thing I've been struggling with the most is being consistent and having a schedule which for anyone that has followed me for any length of time that is my biggest struggle I got so many kids and so much chaos in my life that it is absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, I used the wrong brush earlier. This is my dye brush, like for dye inks. So I've kind of cleaned them off. Anyway, uh, let's be smart. I was getting distracted. I was getting angry, you know? Anyway, um, stubborn you no <laughs> yeah exactly i'm an angel <laughs> like i say to to chris i am a delight and you are hashtag blessed <laughs> i am warm and cuddly <laughs> and there's usually swearing involved with that but i'm trying i try not to swear on my youtube channel anyway Okay, the bat has to be black. He just has to be. That's that's the that's the rule. That is the law. Okay, he needs to be, he needs to be black. So we're gonna make him black. Told you guys there was a method to the madness. There we go. Oh my goodness. I looked up spatter and splatter. Yes. Exactly. That's why that, that person in their entire, like, and, and I didn't care that they went after me. It, it honestly didn't bother me at all. But when I found out that that person went on like tons of other makers channels and like literally it has made it their mission in life. And I was like, and the funny thing is, I was like, you're wrong. You're literally wrong. They're the same thing. And what I do, what I do personally is splatter. Like spatter is more like delicate, gentle, little doo -doo, like little angel kisses of you know you guys know i'm like flinging it on it is splatter and now it will always be splatter even if i do magically end up having a gentle hand because tell me try to tell me what to do especially it's one thing if you have constructive feedback i will take constructive feedback you know um i'm always up for ideas and different ways to do things or pronounce things you know that sort of stuff I'm all for it I will take constructive feedback but if you're going to come at me and tell me how to live my life and how like this is wrong and you're being rude passive aggressive condescending etc you're gonna just well you're gonna learn and I my response is going to be abrupt and generally not very nice and is what it is and I got smears anyway we're gonna fix that so yeah there's my, there's my, my speech for the day. <laughs> oh my goodness. Eh, it's fine. It's fine. Oh my goodness. Okay. So we got that. I'm going to add that because this is a five by seven card base so we can totally add this to the inside as well and there's still going to be plenty of space 
you know, because I don't usually add like a ton, but yeah. But first let's trim off one side because it's obviously long. So I'm going to trim off one side to even that out. There we go. I will do that with this one. Get in there. All right. So, but I'm going to wait for a second. Well, actually, no. Let's adhere it because I'm still going to stamp a sentiment too. Yeah. So then if we take, where are my scissors? There's my scissors. Um, as Tim says, you do you, it's your channel. Exactly. And that's why I've been saying more and more often lately. I was like, you know, I used to kind of joke. I was like, I, I started saying, I was like, I don't make the rules. And I'm like, wait a minute. This is my channel. I do make the rules. My social media, my channel, my website, I make the rules and I, I'm the boss. I'm the CEO of, of this as well as every other position. So yeah, you know, I also handle the complaint department. So if you've got complaints, go ahead and send them to me. But they're, they're you know, you, you guys know where those are going to end up. <laughs> Uh, just make sure you see, you know, just put that in the subject line. If you're going to email me a complaint, just put it as a complaint. And then I'll just know that I don't even need to read it. And I can, I can just, you know, burn it, whatever. Because, yeah, I've gotten a lot of those over the years. My, my personality isn't for everyone and I get it. That's okay. It's okay. If we were all the same, this world would be a very boring place. And good, could you imagine if there was like multiples of me it would be awful i don't i wouldn't even i would i don't want that i would like to be cloned just to get more things done but i don't think i could stand myself <laughs> like if we're being honest <laughs> uh, that person must never been told if you don't have nothing nice to say then don't say it at all yeah, and then, yeah, then find or find something i nice say yeah because you know the old saying used to be if you don't have anything nice to say don't say anything. But then Tim Holtz in the last couple years, you know, with all the lives he's been doing, he started saying, he's like, if you can't find something kind to say, find something kind to say. And I just, I loved that. I was like, that kind of puts the onus on the person to like, you know what, if you've got nothing nice to say, find something nice to say, you know, leave a nice comment. You don't need to be, you don't need to spew your negativity on people. They don't need to hear it. You know, if you like, and again, this is kind of for someone, I rant and rave. You guys have no idea. You know, I am someone who will full, like I will rant and complain, but I do it in the privacy of my own home. More often just to myself, sometimes to Chris, a lot of times, a lot of times to Chris, but I will rant and rave, but I get it out of my system and I go on about my day. I am not going to pester other people. I am not going to bring them down. I, you know, and most of the time my, my rants are valid, but you know, it just isn't necessary. And in today's world, find something kind to say. I'm not even talking about like, yes, I love the comments on my YouTube channel, all my social media, everything. I love it. I love the interaction we have. I love hearing who doesn't love a compliment. Like really, who doesn't love and it brightens their day. But not even just me. You know, you see something nice online or you enjoy a little video, leave them a thumbs up. You know, and if you have the time to give them a comment, that means a ton, especially nowadays. It means a ton because we are all so busy and it's nuts. So I appreciate nice comments so much, so much. It literally just, I wish I could respond to every single one. I always heart them on my YouTube channel, like all the comments that are left below. I always heart them so you guys know that I'm actually reading them because they make my day and I check often because also if I need to respond to questions or, you know, explain things, whatever, but it, it, it really, really brains. And I, I, it's something I try to work on as much as I can to leave those nice comments for other people, you know, cause I'm always inspired by other makers like all the time. There's so much creativity out there. So I try, I'm always trying to like leave thumbs up, leave little hearts, leave nice comments to tell them how inspired I was. You know, I don't, I don't have enough hours in a day, but I try.
to let people know that I saw it and that I appreciated it and, you know, they're doing good in the world. And the more people that do that, it would just make things so much better, you know, like so much better. Because, yeah, it is, it can get really ugly sometimes. Again, this is why I love card making and our community because it's overwhelmingly majority of it is positive and kind you know the the random icky ones that pop out of the woodwork those are fewer and further between you know um we have a good community with a lot of good people so that's also why I still do what I do because otherwise I but yeah, as someone who puts their stuff out onto the interwebs, I deal with a lot of just craziness. But me, me. Anyway, anyway. And yes, this is going to be consistent since I won't be able to like show my face after this. Because those that are tuned that tuned in later at the beginning of this video, my face forward camera froze up in the software. Eh, love. I'm being sarcastic. Um, but yeah, 2 p.m. CST central time on Sundays is when I'm going live. We're going to, we're just going to keep powering through and hopefully I can keep this going. See, it is not being normal is vastly overrated. Yes. Today's mood witchy with a chance of sarcasm. Yeah. Yeah. Let's use the same, like the same font. This, this is, this is a me sentiment. So let's, I'm like running out of space. I need more space. Okay, okay. Uh. You make such pretty insights in your cards. Where would you put your personal message? I write it right over this. Like I'll write like a card like this that's so big. If you really didn't want to cover, you could write right here. You know, you got a whole five by seven space. There's also the back. However, everything I put on my cards on the insides, I put with the intention of being written over. I don't care. How that said, depend, and I don't, you know, have a whole lot to say when I'm sending out my cards. So I'll usually be like, dear so-and-so. And then I'm like, blah, 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 blah. and then I'll sign my name, lost my face, whatever. And I'll avoid this whole area. But if I have a lot to say, I'll write right over it. I don't care. This is the inside. This is, this is gravy. You know, the, the front, the front of the card. This is the poutine. Canadianisms. If you haven't had poutine, I'm very sorry. You ha you're missing out. It is mm, poutine. You know, this is the fry, the French fries, and the cheese and the gravy. You know, this 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 is extra. This is the gravy. This is just extra. It's great. Okay, back to what I was doing. <laughs> uh, let's tape open the inside so that I can stamp my sentiments onto the inside. So just a little purple tape. And we'll go like that. And we'll go like this. Uh, and then let's put the sentiment right side up so it's not upside down because that would kind of suck. And then we are gonna Center it just like so, and then we're gonna go like that. And because the sentiment is new and sticky, just go like that. All right, okay, and versifying Claire, not turn. So we're gonna ink this up, we're gonna stamp that down. I was going to say the angels now sing, but that's more like the witches. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. There we go. Let me set that aside so I can do the second one. All righty. I'm uneducated as to poutine. Oh, poutine. <laughs> Poutine is a Canadian thing. It is French fries. You arrange them on your, your, your receptacle. 
And they're better if the French fries are deep fried. Mm. French fries, technically cheese curds is the Canadian proper way. And then you pour over gravy. And Canadian gravy is brown gravy. It is not the white gravy that the States are. No, I'm not even getting into that. And it's just, oh. That is basic poutine. There's a million versions of it nowadays, but that is basic poutine. I honestly prefer French fries and then I grate marble cheese. Marble cheese, because it's since and since it's grated, it's thinner and it melts then, and then you pour the gravy over it, and it's like it's cheese and gravy, and for it is so bad for you, and it's so good. Oh. I haven't had poutine in a while. I need to make it. Anyway. <laughs> Someday, if you ever visit Canada, you can pretty much find poutine absolutely everywhere. Everywhere. Like, fast food places sell it. Restaurants make it. Like, poutine is a thing. And it's delicious. So, anyway. Anyway. Okay. The coven now sings. Yes. Yes. That is, that is correct. I lost my... Oh, that one's dirty. Um... Oh my goodness, you guys. Anyway, thanks you guys so much for joining me again in my chaos. This is fun. I really enjoy doing this, even though it's all oh, the disaster Ugh. and the tech issues. I will be fiddling with that after this live and figuring out why on earth the other camera decided to be stupid on me. But as always, it's just a work in progress. I'll figure it out someday somehow we'll, we'll keep we'll just keep going uh, life is too short to be angry condescending and superior so i try to be kind and feel better because of it yes and once i figure out how to click on comments so they can pop up here for you guys to see you know so i can feature them that's one i would feature you know because 100 percent. you know we don't need it again it's card making we don't need we ain't got time for superiority complexes nobody's got time for that we don't need it you know it just it just just be just be nice you know just be nice so yeah um all righty All right. Now, I also, of course, want to pop this up with what else but Big Mama foam tape. So this is going to take me get these out of the way. That out of the way. Let's get, you know, let's just, 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 just yep, yep, yep. Okay. 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 The foam tape will also help because these are a little they're not super warped but they're a little bit warped so white gravy is great on biscuits oh yeah I think Americans white gravy has its place for certain things and I from the sounds of, like I don't even I don't think I've ever had it but I've seen it you know in recipe videos and that sort of thing and yeah I think it's got its place I just that is not the norm up here at all. Like Canadians do not make white gravy. That's just not what we grow up with. And it kind of weirds me out, but it's got its place. And yeah, I think on biscuits, it would probably be really, really good. But yeah, if someone ever makes poutine with white gravy, that is like, that, that is a crime. That, that is a crime. And I think it should be reported if, there, if there's somebody out there doing it. Cause nope. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, do you make your poutine gravy from scratch? No, no. I I just buy gravy mix uh, from Costco. They've got a brown gravy mix, and the only time I make gravy from scratch is when we're doing something like turkey. You know, because I've got, I got a big old turkey going, all the juices, etc. I make gravy from that and I make, oh, good gravy. But 
Yeah, to make a proper gravy, you either need to be making a lot of meat of some sort, or you need a mix. So I just get a mix, because especially for protein. You get a big bag of brown gravy mix at Costco. And yeah, that's that's what we do. And we actually can get at our grocery stores, we can get poutine gravy mix. And that stuff's good too. Um, that's usually actually what we get, but then I just started getting the Costco stuff because my kids love poutine and fries and gravy and that kind of stuff. So I get the I get the Costco size bag because we go through a lot of it. Alrighty. Um there we go. I'm like trying to keep up with the chat, but I've missed, I've missed things I'm sure, but that's fine. Um, I love the amount of adhesive you use. I feel seen well with foam adhesive. You need to use a fair amount because if you only use like, let's say I only put three, like one, two, three strips these whole sections would have nothing. And when you put that through the mail, those are gonna bow and it's gonna get crushed. So, and this roll, like really, look at the size of this. Like look how thin this is. And then look at the size of this roll. Even for me, and you guys see, I make a lot of cards. I use a lot of this. This roll still lasts me forever because there's so much on it. It says on the Simon Says site, and I think I have it linked below. And if I don't, I will link to it. But it says how many feet are in this roll. It's insane. Like, yeah, yeah. Anywho. Alrighty. So we got that. Let's get that out of the way. Hang him back on my pegboard. And then, okay, let's get these onto the card bases. Uh, Ikea makes Swedish meatballs. Swedish meatball. Well, I, uh, Ikea food. Uh, I, I still eat it when we're the rare times we actually get to an Ikea because it's not close by. But homemade Swedish meatballs and that the, and a homemade gravy meant for Swedish meatballs. Chef's kiss. Oh, I'll make up a bed of like basmati rice and then Swedish meatballs and you pour that gravy. Oh, yum. Yum! <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay. Did the blue one. Okay, making sure I got the wrong, right card front for the right card inside. And then we're gonna adhere this. There we go. And then we just repeat for the second. Yes, big one, 72 yards. So that is 210, 12, 14, 216 feet of adhesive. So yeah, like you got a lot. There's a reason it's called Big Mama because that roll is enormous and it will last you a very, very, very long time. Eh. It's also very sticky. Okay. Let's. And then it wouldn't be complete without some bling. I want that one. And then we'll do that one, I think. No, let's do polar lights. That one. Okay. Um, I'm not, I know this one actually is still available. Um, I've got a link to the Picket Fence Studios gem mixes in the description box below the video um but i'm not sure what all simon has in stock for them but yeah 
their links below. And I especially have been loving their gem mixes because they look like Swarovskis. Like, they're so pretty. All right. So yeah, this one's Lemon Lime and this one's Polar Lights. Give me one second here. Okay. Okay. Let's add a little bit of bling. You can't, you can't have it without, um, you gotta have some bling, all right? So we'll just do some little, some little dabs of glue and Some of these are so tiny and they're so pretty. Love it. Love it. Oh yeah, you gotta have bling. Let me see, I can, let me. Ho ho ho. Yes. Alrighty. And a few more. Sneak some in and around here. Oh, need some of the smaller ones. Where are they hiding? Or maybe the bigger one, that's what I need. Do a bigger one. There we go. There we go. Lords of Kathy's boop boop. Yes. That is a little Kathy Z trademark. And I love it. It's super cute. There's another little one right there. Ooh, there's like opal colored ones in this one. Oh, I didn't see those. Well, now we have to add some of these too. Love. I didn't realize those were in there. Ooh, and clear ones too? Oh. Well, they all just need to be on here. <laughs> Can never have too much bling as far as I'm concerned. And especially ones like this, there's like five bajillion of them, so why not? There we go. Love it. Love, love, love. No, no, that's good. That's good. Got a few little blingies on that one. And then let's add a little bit of bling to this guy so that they both have their bits of bling. Some over there, and there, and some of these tiny little ones. Gonna stick those in and amongst everything. Just like so. Yes. All righty. Um, I love, um, I love the, oh, 
sorry guys, I was like completely, Oop, there we go. I was too focused on adding the, the bling. Anyway, I love that like there's this entire conversation going on about poutine. That makes me laugh. And again, I'm sorry or you're welcome. <laughs> uh. Anywho, as I'm finishing up here, um, again, for those that weren't here at the very beginning, I cannot switch over to talk face to face to you guys because my software froze right at the beginning of the video. Um, so I'm just stuck with this. So I just want to say thank you all so very much for tuning in and for chatting with me and all of the thumbs upping and whatnot. That helps a ton. Uh, after this video is officially ended, I will have, I will edit my supply list and I'll post all the links in the description box below. All of my links are affiliate links. They help a ton when people use my affiliate links. It doesn't cost you anything to use my affiliate links, but it helps a ton. It's how I pay my bills and whatnot. And I will edit that. I will also, of course, take finished photos, all the things. I'll have my blog post up, all that stuff. So that'll be up roughly about half an hour or so after this video is over. I've got like bling stuck in the hinge. Get out of there. There we go. So yeah, there, let me, let me zoom out a little bit. Uh, there we go. So there are the finished cards using all these fun picket fence stencils and wafer dye and stamps and all the things. The stencils I use, the dyes and whatnot and the stamps, those are already linked directly below. And then, yeah, I will edit all of the things, but these are all like, there's shiny, shimmery goodness going on. And then there's the inside. And then this one, same thing. We've got shimmer and fabulousness and the inside. So yeah, I will get all of the things edited, photographed, etc., etc., And that'll go up in about 30 minutes. So you guys can check back if you are interested. And again, thank you so much. I love the lives are sort of working <laughs> and I do plan on coming back every Sunday at 2 p.m central time that's going to be like our time to hang out and chat and craft and there may be other random lives but I'll always try to announce them ahead of time we'll see as I'm like figuring everything out and then I I pretty much have a new video almost every day um, so always stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you haven't. I would love to have you. We are getting very, very close to 100,000 subscribers here, which is absolutely mind-blowing. I am very much hoping that we can hit 100,000 in the near-ish future. I have no idea how long it's going to take. It's probably going to take forever. <laughs> but I want to do some really, really big giveaways. I might do a giveaway when we hit 95 because I think we're closing in on 91,000, which is mind-blowing so I may do like a preemptive giveaway at 95 and then we'll do the big ones at 100 and like party you know that'll be fun so thank you guys so very much and yeah I will see you all very soon in the next video have a great day you guys bye